Here we're going to look at a nice problem that originally was a classical Japanese temple geometry problem. So it's from this source. Okay, so let's look at the setup. So we've got this circle of radius R. We don't know what that radius is just yet. And then stacked to the side of this circle of radius R, we have two squares next to each other that have side length 2. And then on top of that, we've got a circle of radius 1. And the important thing here is that the center of the circle is directly above where these two squares meet. So this is all the information that we have, and we want to find R given the measurements of those three geometric objects over there, the two squares and the one circle. Okay, so we're going to do this by drawing a couple of um, triangles into this picture and applying the Pythagorean theorem. So let's see how this can go. So the first thing that I want to do is maybe drop a vertical line straight down here so that it meets here at a right angle. And notice, we know what the length of that whole thing is. The length of that whole thing is R because it is also a radius of the circle. Now, the next thing that I want to do is put a line which is horizontal emanating from the center of this smaller circle. And that's going to be parallel to this line that I have down here. So let's go ahead and draw that line in as well. So we will not know the length of this line, segment I should say, so I'll just call it X. Great, and then let's complete this into a right triangle by putting our hypotenuse in there like that. So there we've got a right triangle, there is our right angle. And we know some measurements on this right triangle. So notice the hypotenuse is R because we've got a radius of the circle plus one because we have a radius of this smaller pink circle. So here we have R plus one for the hypotenuse of this triangle. And then we know this as well because this distance right here spans the length of this square down here and our pink circle. And so this length right here is 2 plus 1 or 3, making this length that's left over r minus 3. Okay, so that's good. Now we can write the Pythagorean theorem using those lengths. So that is going to give us x squared plus r minus 3 squared equals r plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, so that's good. So the next thing that we'll do is introduce another triangle that also involves this length x and r, and then we'll have a system of equations that we can use to solve for both x and r, but all we really need is r. Okay, so let's look at this next triangle that we're going to insert into the picture. So I'm going to take a radius from the circle that starts, well, obviously at the center and ends at this vertex on the square. So let's take that, and that's going to end up being the hypotenuse of our triangle. Then next, I'm going to send a horizontal line over here from this vertex of the square, and then use this as the third leg of my triangle. So notice that gives me a right triangle as well. And I know the hypotenuse length is r because it's a radius of our circle. And then furthermore, we know this length right here is r minus 2 because it's the radius of this circle minus the length of this yellow square. That's good to know. And then we also know this length of the bottom segment as well. This is going to be x minus 2 because notice it's the length x of this purple triangle minus the length of this yellow square, so we get x minus 2 there. So that's good to know. Now what we can do is maybe put this into the Pythagorean theorem as well, giving us another equation involving r and x. So let's see, that's going to be x minus 2 squared plus r minus 2 squared equals r squared. So something like that. 
Okay, so next thing that we probably wanna do is multiply each of these all the way out so that we've got something to work with that's in smaller pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. So this first equation is gonna become x squared plus r squared minus 6r plus nine equals r squared plus 2r plus one. That's what we get after multiplying out that first equation. For this second equation, we're gonna have x squared minus four x plus four. Okay, that's good. And then plus r squared minus four r plus four. That's good too. Equals r squared. Now what I wanna notice is I can cancel some things in these equations. So notice this equation up here, this first equation has an r squared on both sides. So I can cancel this r squared with this r squared. Next, this second equation also has an r squared. So I can go ahead and cancel that r squared with that r squared as well. Next, we'll move some things around on this first equation so that we can solve for some multiple of r. So notice I can move this 6r to one side of the equation. That's gonna give me 8r because I add 6r. Then I'll subtract one to the other side of the equation. So that's gonna give me x squared plus eight. Good. Then we're gonna do a similar thing here. Notice that we can move a 4r over. We can also combine this four plus four. So we're gonna get 4r equals, in this case, we're gonna have x squared minus four x plus eight. So we'll have something like that. Now, this is actually a little bit more useful than it may seem, especially if we take this second equation and multiply it by two, that's gonna give us another equation for eight r. So here we'll have 8r equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 16. And from here what we can do is notice that 0 is the same thing as 8r minus 8r. But that's going to be this version of 8r involving the 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus this version of 8r. So let's see what that gives us. We've got 2x squared minus x squared. That's going to be x squared, then minus 8x, and then 16 minus 8. Well, that's just going to be 8. So we'll have plus 8. Okay. Now, first, maybe we should see if we can factor that so we can figure out what x is but I don't think we can factor this pretty very easily. Notice that there are no numbers that multiply to eight and add to eight. Well, at least no rational numbers. So we'll probably need to use the quadratic formula. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have x equals, so negative b, so that's gonna be eight plus minus the square root of b squared. So that's gonna be 64 minus four times a times c, so that's gonna be minus 30 2 all over 2. Now next, I can notice that I only really need to take the positive part of the solution because the negative part would give us a negative number, but that's clearly not going to work in this geometric problem. So here we'll have x equals, so it's going to be 8 plus the square root of 32 over 2, given that 64 minus 32 is 32. Next, we can see that 32 is equal to 16 times 2. So what that means is we can pull a 16 out of the square root, it becomes a 4, and then cancel it with this 2 in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll give us 4 plus... And then next, bringing that 16 out, it'll be a four, cancel with the two. That'll give us a two square root of two. Good. So now we've got a value for x, and then we can insert this value of x into maybe either of these equations to get us a value for r. So maybe I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll finish it off like that. So on the last board, we figured out a value for 8r in terms of x. It was equal to x squared plus 8. And then we also solved for x. x was equal to 4 plus 2 root 2. And recall that x was this length right here in our diagram. 
So let's go ahead and insert that value of x in here. Then we'll have a value for 8r, which will immediately give us a value for r. So we'll have 8r is equal to 4 plus 2 root 2 quantity squared plus 8. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have 4 times 4 is 16 plus 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. So that's going to be plus 8 and then plus twice the cross terms. So notice twice the cross terms will be 4 times 2 root 2 times 2. So that'll be plus 16 square root of 2. And then we've got this plus 8 that was you know part of the original. So let's see what that gives us. So we've got 16 plus 8 plus 8. So that's going to be equal to 32 plus 16 root 2. But notice that's equal to 8r, which means if we divide both sides of the equation by 8, we'll get r equals, well, 32 divided by 8 is 4. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So we get 4 plus 2 root 2, which is kind of beautifully the same value we got for x, which is a pretty interesting result. And that's a good place to stop.